Hello and welcome to this week's video which is all about having a relationship with someone who is a chameleon, otherwise known as a shapeshifter. Does the following sound familiar to you? They were amazing, they were everything I wanted and now I don't know who they are. They're with somebody else now and I don't recognize them, it's like they've changed their personality. I have no idea what's happened, they moved on really quickly, etc, etc. If that kind of rhetoric is going in around your head, chances are you were in a relationship with a chameleon-like person. Someone who is able to morph themselves into exactly what it is that you want. There are many reasons behind this and we're gonna take a look at some of these in the video and also how to kind of see if that's what's going on and then how to move past that once the relationship is over because a lot of people end up really, really doubting themselves. A lot of people end up quite devastated after such a relationship has finished. And there are many reasons to this, one of them being the relationship is going to have been, for at least one of you, extremely, amazing and deep. So that's what a chameleon is, that's what to look out for. Let's delve deeper into this and look at some of the dynamics. First of all, why does a, chame why does a chameleon like person do the things they do? Well, often you will find in their history some kind of trauma, some kind of tragedy, some kind of major rejection, some kind of ostracization or something like that, or a major event which has led them to lose their sense of self, lose their self-identity, or they were never given one. So they may have come from a place of neglect, dysfunction, or abuse. Hence, they don't have an identity. How does a person or a young child, if you like in this case, solve this problem of not having an identity? Well, that's really easy. They assume an identity based on what someone else wants them to be, or not what they want them to be, what someone else wants from a partner, a friend, etc., etc. So these people who have experienced this stuff and become uh, chameleon-like or shape-shifters, part of the defense mechanism uh, to be able to cope with their early environment is to be able to pick up signals, recognize stuff, use their intuition in order to be something for somebody else in order to not receive any further persecution or malevolence or malicious intent or cruelty. This is what they uh, become highly, highly adept at and highly attuned to. How do they pick you out? Well, a lot of people are quite honest and in a new relationship or a new friendship will begin to share and give signals and give indications as to what they are looking for. Hopes, dreams, the ideal partner, things they like, things, things they do. And a chameleon-like person will study you and end up knowing you better than you know yourself in some respects. They will understand and very quickly pick up on exactly what it is you want from a partner, what it is you want from a friend, whatever the relationship is, what your hopes and dreams are, what your insecurities are, what your vulnerabilities are, what your previous hurts were, uh, what you like, what you don't like, how you like to be treated. They will pick up on this so quickly. They will study you and they will begin to very quickly shape shift and morph into this ideal friend relationship partner that you are kind of unwittingly and quite honestly and, you know, uh, what's the word, genuinely and trustingly explaining, telling them about. And if you think you don't do it, there will be signs that you do do it. The other thing shapeshifters or chameleons can do is they will be able to spot out and look for other people who are vulnerable. Often they will see the wound that they have, they will see that in someone else. They will be able to pick it out. So if, because they're looking for love, they're looking for love and they're looking for attention, they're looking for security and they're looking for a self identity. It needs to come from within, but as I said, the easiest way to solve this is to, ah, oh, that's what this person wants, that's what I'll be, therefore this person will give me what I want. It's the quickest and easiest solution to said problem without having to look at yourself. So, you will inevitably give over information, even by your reactions to certain situations, reactions to the things they do. 
Now, one of the first things that they'll start to do is very much like a narcissist, um, they will love bomb you. They will most likely sex bomb you as well. So they will be everything you want to be in the bedroom. They will be everything you want to be, you want them to be in the relationship. You may as well hear phrases like, I've never done this before with a partner. Um, this is a first time for me. I mean, it can get quite explicit, you know, kind of like I've never performed oral sex on a, um, on a man before or on a woman before. This is the first time for me. The person has to be really special for me to feel comfortable enough to do that. I really trust you. That's why I did this. I don't normally sleep with someone um, on the second meeting, but there's just something very special about you. And they will be able to gradually manipulate you into seeing something that they aren't actually are. That's not the best sentence, but it's the best one I got at this moment. They will be able to give you this illusion. They will be able to throw glitter into your eyes. It will be smoke and mirrors. It will be an illusion. But there's another side to this as well. Whilst for the most part it is an illusion and it is smoke and mirrors and glitter in your eyes, there for in order for the manipulation to work, they will have to feel drawn to you. They will have to be an emotional connection in order for it to work really, really well and stand a long term uh, or a chance of having a long term benefits and to keep the charade going. Eventually they will run out of steam and it will crash down around them and then we'll get onto that. But there will be some kind of connection there. There will be this meeting, you know, and there will be, and they will go on about, you know, and maybe they'll go on about twin flame, soul mates, um, never been like this before with anybody. Uh, they will make you feel like the center of their world. And they're doing this because they want you to do it for them. They want to be the center of your world. It's very similar to the kind of narcissistic uh, or a narcissist dynamics of, I'm gonna give you what you want because that's what I want. So in order to get what I want, I give you what you want to teach you how to give it to me. That's kind of what they're up to. Um, and like I say, this creates quite a beautiful um, illusion. Um, this creates one extremely bonding, um, dynamic, impactful, deep relationship, but ultimately it's not real. So for instance, to give you some insights, I have um, worked with some people in, in the therapy room who have these tendencies, who have these chameleon-like tendencies. Um, when they are kind of end up beginning to work on themselves, not all of them do, but some of them actually do go down that route, they talk about this stuff. And they talk about how they were able to pick somebody out of a million strong crowd because they can see someone who wants to give love, who wants to be loved. They can see that vulnerable wound in someone else that they have. And they say they stick out like a sore thumb. They're like, thumb. They're like a beacon. And they say, then we home in and then I home in on them and I give them everything that they want and learn very quickly to do this. If you are in a relationship with someone like this, what tends to happen is you will end up with this kind of conflicted, contradictory kind of version of them. You will have one version which you have built in your mind, which is, and we build versions of people in our minds all the time. So for instance, my perception of person A is going to be different to somebody else's perception of person A, because I have my filters, I have my life experiences, I have my perception of what they're saying and how they're saying it and the second person does as well, and they're standing at a different viewpoint. What happens is we begin to build, we begin to dress the image of someone, we, the impression we get of someone, and by impression I mean that, that kind of uh, impression as in a, um, the image of them in our mind, in our psyche, this is who that person is. We then begin to dress it, we dress it with the stuff that they give us, and we dress it with our own stuff, so our own wants, desires, unconsciously, and we begin to build up a fantasy illusion of them, which absolutely helps the chameleon because, like I said, they're throwing glitter in your eyes. So it, it makes their job easier because you're already wanting this kind of fantasy person and they're just filling that space. They realize what needs to be in that space and they begin to fill it. The contradiction to that is where it's perhaps dysfunctional, malevolent, malicious, selfish, 
Um, you might find at times it was uh, there. There is uh, violence or abuse, erratic behaviours, irrational behaviours, the, the smashing of items in the house, huge, great kind of World War Three eruptions between the two of you. And this is because the charade is breaking down. This is because often you're trying to get the connection because something doesn't feel quite out of place. So they're connected to you, but you're not connected to them. They may be quite giving as well, but they won't be so giving emotionally of themselves. They won't reveal themselves because there's nothing to reveal. This is the thing. The, the thing to reveal is this vulnerable, wounded child or inner child or person from way back then. That's it's very similar to a narcissist. That's what is to be revealed. So they're not going to let you see that. And they've covered it over by morphing for different people being chameleon-like and shape-shifting for different people with different relationships, therefore actually changing personality, changing wants, likes, needs, actions, behaviours, principles, values, they will all change from relationship to relationship. And when you try to connect, when you try to get that kind of connection back that they're giving you, you'll find it's not there. That then becomes confusing. They often come out on the attack or they'll do a woe is me story and to get you to, you know, back off. Anything to kind of distract you away from the vulnerable self that is inside. For many people who are experiencing a relationship like this, they don't quite realize what the relationship was until sometime after the relationship is finished because in the initial stages of the relationship breaking down and ending, they will be hit with the loss of the ideal relationship. So they will have the relationship on a pedestal you will have put it on a pedestal because it will have been so damn amazing. So you're grieving the loss of that. Then you will be having to combat the hostile behaviors that often come after the breakup and also witnessing the change, the complete change in personality, maybe having a succession of partners very quickly after the breakup of the relationship, maybe settling in with someone very, very quickly, moving into their house, um, and you will be witnessing completely different behaviors, not like the similar behaviors, principles and values that they had in the relationship with you. Um, and then they've just happened to be lucky to meet someone else quite soon and they kind of fit. That's one thing. It's watching how much they change. And this will add to your grief, add to your loss, and you will need to uh, be able to uh, work your way through that and work your way through your grief and loss of the, the relationship and the fantasy image and how amazing this relationship was. And often if you're in therapy, your therapist will kind of reflect back that, well, on the one hand, you tell me this, 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 and this about this kind of godlike person, goddess-like person. And on the other hand, you tell me about this dysfunctional, irrational, um, you know, biting, hissing, kind of quite vicious person who can come out on the attack and the two don't seem to kind of integrate together particularly well and that's because they don't that's because it's a flick from pole to pole there's no gray area in between in a healthy kind of individual a healthy person a healthy relationship you'll be moving around within the gray area not from pole to pole and some of their reactions as i said will become you when you step back they'll be like that was really irrational it was really over the top but then you'll forgive them because they did this, this, and this, and they're so amazing, and there's this history to this relationship, and you've never had sex like it, and you've never had such an emotional connection, and someone support you so much in your hopes and your dreams and your desires, and they just seem to be able to know exactly what to get you for your birthday, exactly what to get you on uh, Christmas, and things like that. They will know you inside out, as I've said, so much better than you actually know yourself, because they are tuned in on it for survival. When it starts to break down, when it no longer works, boom, they're gone, they move on, and very quickly they do it with someone else as well because they're extremely skilled at this. Any period of time when they're on their own, they're not gonna manage themselves particularly very well. Because there's no identity there that's built, been built up over the years, there's no kind of like, the true self is quite small, insecure and vulnerable, and it's protected, very similar to narcissistic dynamics. And because of this chameleon-like behavior from relationship to relationship, from friendship to friendship, et cetera, et cetera, 
family won't be able to recognise them. Sometimes you may even have that conversation with a family member of theirs and they'll go, yeah, this is nothing unusual to us. So we've seen this before. They were completely different with the person they were with before you and they're completely different again. We don't know what to do. We kind of just took it that that's just the way they are. So you will you will see all of this stuff and it will lead to confusion and it will also erode your own self-identity. And this takes normally quite some time to get past. Like I say, you start to see the, the wood for the trees, if, you know, after the breakup, some months down the line for some people, even maybe even years, they begin to see what, exactly what it was. It was a manipulation. It was um, a way to control the situation. It was a way to get something from you in order to keep themselves safe. And you never did truly have the love and support and the emotional connection that you thought you did have because it was dressed up so beautifully in many other ways. Now, this also has an impact on children. And if the relationship has produced children, then your children are gonna go through a very, very similar thing as well, as in mum or dad has now completely changed behavior and they will witness this changing of behavior, this complete personality switch, which will happen from partner to partner, from friendship to friendship, or as they move around from town to town, etc., etc., starting up a new life, starting up a new life, finishing a life, starting up a new life. Children are going to be dragged along for the ride and going to come out quite confused and conflicted as well, and are going to need possibly some therapeutic help when they are older to be able to decipher exactly what's going on, and maybe also to be maybe be not quite so confused themselves with who they are, especially if contact has been cut with the other parent who did not have chameleon-like tendencies. Now, if you find yourself coming out of a relationship like this, you will most likely find yourself quite confused, extremely bereaved, and lacking an identity yourself. And there's a danger point here where you begin to morph for somebody else. It doesn't happen to everybody, but it is something which can happen. You will, because you feel so kind of stripped down, bare and vulnerable and like you've lost the greatest thing that you've ever come across, you might latch on to somebody else quite quick. This is the period of your life or the interperiod uh, between relationships where you really, really do take stock, work your way through it, work your way through it with a therapist, try to understand it try to come to peace with it and maybe view it with some compassion for both them and for yourself. Something someone once, I heard someone once say to somebody else who was going through a similar thing was, what do you believe it was? And they said, oh, I believe it was 90% real. And I believe they were quite traumatized. So in the end they had to leave because the relationship, they couldn't keep it going, you know, after so many years, they had to keep the facade going. And this person turned and said, then stick with that. If that one fits the best for you, then stick with that. Because we can torture ourselves trying to go over oh, how foolish were we, how much I was manipulated, I didn't see it coming, etc., etc. I've lost the greatest thing in my life. And actually, what it comes down to is, you had the principles and values, you had the likes, the dislikes, etc., and the boundaries that you wanted within a relationship. You offered them freely. You described them freely. You showed that's what you wanted somehow, even unconsciously, your reactions, like I said, to certain situations. And there will have had to have been a connection there for it to work for any kind of significant amount of time. They will have had to have real feelings for you. Often manipulation works that way. This is something I think gets often overlooked. For manipulation to truly work, there has to be an emotional connection and it has to be a two-way street. It might not be a massive emotional connection, but it has to be there. They have to at least like you. There are certain types of manipulation and control which are beyond that kind of situation, but there has to be something there. And sometimes that can be kind of like a soft thought, a saving grace when recovering from such a relationship with a chameleon or a shapeshifter that, you know, some of it was real, some of it was not, and they couldn't keep the pretense going. But for that, for a brief time, I experienced something which I really, really enjoyed. And if you have those principles and values, if you have that ability to love and to be loved, you're going to find it again. You might come across another chameleon, 
because as a shaman once said to me, um, Uncle Buell, you always meet the same person. They just come along in better disguises. The better the disguises means that you are actually spotting the red flags quicker. So people have to try harder, but eventually you get rid of the red flags. You come across someone, this is the idea, you will come across someone who doesn't produce you any red flags. You will have done the work on yourself. You have realized why you kind of latched onto the dysfunctional, why you accepted certain behaviors and you will put those in as more boundaries and more boundaries and you'll begin to know exactly what it is that you want. And like I say, if you've managed to achieve it before and managed to come across it before, chances are you'll come across it again if you're open to it. But you have to heal first, you have to do self-care, and you have to forgive yourself and have compassion because you were 100% true in that relationship. The fact that the other person wasn't is completely irrelevant. You were 100% true. They were to a certain percent true within the relationship and that's enough. It can be enough of a comforting uh, thought. You learn from it and you begin to move forward in life. I hope that helps. I'll see you on the next video. And in the meantime, please take very good care of yourselves.